Welcome back, everybody, to Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline. My name, as before, and still is, Alcini, <laughs> and I'm co-hosting this program with Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and it's a pleasure working with Ian and Helena. And I'm excited about your next guest, guys, because we always talk about the value and opportunity of turning points in our lives where we can suddenly flip a switch, all of a sudden stop being something negative and start becoming something positive. And I think that's what you have in store for us just now, isn't it? So do you have. Um, I have to say, I've interviewed quite a few people, but more commonly, I'm an extraordinary mm -hmm. in not only what he's doing, but what he does now. And it's such a hugely long story, I can keep going on two shows, to be quite honest. But he is a super, super guy. Um, he's modest, he's sensitive, he's personable. He really has been through a huge amount of abuse. Um, okay. He's completely fought back, and his yeah. spirit is simply amazing. And I think we have a clip that we're going to show. Ian, do you want to tee that up? That's right. So um, um, Paul uh, is involved in a movie called uh, uh, Big Boys Don't Cry. Big Boys Don't Cry, and it's basically an adaption from his best-selling author book. He's got a few books out, uh, Against All Odds, Not Normal, but it's been adapted from Not Normal, and it is a super, super, super feature film that we're about to see the clip of. And it's winning awards. So we're it's a, so it's awesome. very powerful, very moving. Very Let's take powerful. a look. Absolutely. that place those people we need to talk to you about your time growing up in St. Nena's children's home six of your eight housemates committed suicide Mr. Connolly I'm afraid I have to tell you that another child in your care home Liam Carroll has also recently taken his own life. Jason, Jeff, Andrew. Wow. Very dramatic. That is, really. it's, you know, it's amazing. I felt like the four of us were all at a movie theater together watching that. Mm. So powerful, Matt. That shared experience. That was amazing. Let's bring him out, shall we? Absolutely. Yes. Sir Paul Connolly, welcome to the show. Hi, Paul. Ah. Paul, we're so, so happy to see you. We're so happy to thank you. That clip, every time I see it, is, it just is incredible. And I think Dr. Jacklin summed it up. He just it leaves us in awe and wants we just want to see and hear more. And obviously knowing that uh, Michael Socher is the main is the main uh, actor in that, which is amazing. Yeah. You know, sort of winding back slightly, there are so many aspects to your life. Mm. Um, there's so much to go through. I think we spoke about it earlier. It's almost like there's so so much. It's like where to start, but if you're able to try and like introduce and speak us through how how things began and you know give us some, some an understanding behind behind everything. So uh, uh, yeah, sure. Nice to see you, Helena. Um, Thank you. Uh, so um, I was the youngest of uh, seven boys, Irish Catholics, and um, my mum put me up with the rubbish, and. Um, 
I went into the care system in London, uh, being the, and was brought up by nuns and the Catholic Church till I was about seven. But unfortunately, when I, at eight, you had to go to what they called a big boys' children's home. And that, unfortunately, that children's home was run by a pedophile ring or pedophile ring, as you American people say. <laughs> and uh, it, was, um, it was a pretty horrific 10 years of my life from eight to 18. Um, I, I got involved with boxing and my boxing coaches actually be, stopped a lot of my abuse and they became mentors to me. But fortunately or unfortunately, the boxing coaches were gangsters. They had, they had um, quite um, rough up, up, upbringings themselves and they were my mentors. So I became a bit of a violent gangster myself up until yeah. about 2000. And my life's very similar to that movie Sleepers, but my movie's been likened to it. Um, the only difference is that I've learned my lesson, I've changed, and those guys didn't, and they obviously ended up dying by the sword, as they say. Um, I don't know where to start, really, because there's been so many. I was talking to Helena earlier, and she was like, well, <laughs> well you can't say all that. It's just too much. So uh, uh, I don't really know where, you know, wh where you want me to go with it. But, like, obviously... There's a lot to say. There's, there's, there's so much to say, isn't there? I mean, obviously, start, I mean, there's there's so many challenges you've got through, and you you always, I don't know, you have this fighting spirit, and that's what I find yeah. because obviously, I, I had this unbelievable optimism as a child, which was really unbelievable. I thought I was amazing. I thought I was I was the most amazing person you ever meet. <laughs> when you consider <laughs> what I was, it seems a bit crazy, really. Um, I had this self belief in myself and this unbelievable i manifested at such a young age i was manifesting daydreaming whatever you want to call it and i just thought i, was, I thought i was someone special and, <laughs> which is ridiculous when you think about the surroundings i was in and i daydreamed a lot and um uh, i had I had no safe place when i was in the children's home i was either beaten by the staff or abused by the staff or the children's home i was in i know you don't want to get too dark but it was you know every type of abuse you could think of mm. uh, starvation and, and you know neglect and sexual abuse mental abuse physical abuse and you know i think i went into my own little world you know really and i just accepted it as that was my lot it was my norm and obviously it's only with hindsight with the benefit of hindsight that you can sort of think well that wasn't normal mm. and you know but at the time it was my normality and so it wasn't anything unusual to me, you know. But my saving, my saving, my saving grace really was I became quite a personable kid, and people liked me and took an interest in me. And my boxing coach's wives, for instance, would feed me because we were starved. Well, we were on bed, you know. We we're always hungry. They sort of the first girlfriend I had, the mother sort of mothered me a bit, you know, and looked after me. So I think when people took a liking to me, which was my my saving grace. I was, I was a nice, I was a nice kid for a while anyway, until, mm. until the worm turned, as they say. Uh, yeah. Paul, Paul, I, I know you've, um, you've really turned your life around. I mean, you, you do so many services. I, I'm very pleased you've got time to come on TV this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> You're much sought after person in the UK and around the world at the same time. So. Mm. You're, you're doing you're doing things like pain relief now. Just give us a, a quick insight into the types of things that you're involved in nowadays. So I was the first PT in the city of London back in the early '80s, um, and I was originally a boot camp type PT. I worked out in LA. I worked all over the place. We, I made the body video with Elle McPherson. I, I, I excelled as a personal trainer, but when I was running around with a gun, being like you know, a violent individual, I was told by two people, strangers, that I was going to be a great healer one day. And it, in my late 20s, and I was so violent, I was so, you know, I swerved, a, I, I, I barely, narrowly got away with a 10-year prison sentence. I was attacked by five men, and they lost, basically, the two of them did. And I, but I hasten to add really quickly, I've been violent free since 2000. It's a bit like an alcoholic, right? You don't, I've, I, you know, yeah, I've been... I've been sobriety um and um so i was never i never i was never involved in sports injury work or or that for the first sort of 10 or 15 years of my 
my health and fitness trainer and i was i was quite a well-known trainer in london and then um i had this bad fall which severed my arm off and cut my hand in half and i really got involved in how to heal myself because there wasn't a lot around at the time hmm. and then about 10 years ago I got very ill and I went, I was in hospital and I was, I was, I was dying. I had this disease called endocarditis and it's, I was 70% infected with this disease and they, you die with organ failure at 60% infection. They call it the silent killer because the time you know you've got it, you die. It's, it's right. too much. Anyway, they said, said goodbye to the wife and kids. They did my last rites in the hospital out in Essex and they said like, you won't be here in the morning. So come and say goodbye to him. Halfway through the night, and this will freak you out, this big black guy appeared at the side of my bed and said, do you mind if I hold your hand and, and say some comforting words to you or say some prayers or something like that? And I just thought, oh, it's another priest, right? They, mm -hmm. you know, it's on my docs that I'm a Catholic. They're just sending a priest to send me off. Anyway, when he held my hand, I just felt really good, you know, all the anxiety went and everything. And sure enough, I was there the next morning and they was like, wow, and there was five, five weeks on a drip got straight out for that five weeks i was trying to find this priest and thank him and everything else the man didn't exist now in the last 10 or 11 years i mean I've, i was in i was doing sports injury work before that i've literally got people traveling all over the from all over the world to come and see me i'm i'm still i'm running a sports injury clinic but i'm getting people out of pain that nobody else can and it's some, most of it you could explain through what i do but some of it can't be explained and that's that guy that was that was that was that guy who didn't exist and the funny thing was i grew up in children's homes and i've got this real empathy for black people because they were like my brothers everyone around me was black i was yeah. irish there was in the kids in the in the care were either irish or black um I, I, and so the funny thing was that i it, this this big black guy looked like sydney potier was holding my hand saying lovely things to me and saying prayers to me and took away all my anxiety and I, I wasn't supposed to survive and I survived. And ever, it wasn't even the fact that I survived. It's the fact that the, the abundance and my life has changed so much in the last 10, 11 years since that's happened. I'm in such demand for, for what I do. Now, I don't lead with any of the spiritual stuff. I, I run a, a sports injury clinic. I'm a specialist conditioning coach. People come to me. And what I do is I put them on the bed. I find the, the weak spots. I find what's firing, what muscles are angry, what muscles are not angry, what muscles are overworking, what muscles are wasted. I then treat them in lots of different ways to get all the anger out of their body. I, I set them up rehab to do at home. I then get the neural pathways clear into the parts of the body where the muscles aren't firing. I start firing muscles that, that don't normally work. And then I start to strengthen their body and balance their body. And they, I have amazing results with Olympic downhill skiers, top athletes, children with scoliosis. I've had nine operations cancelled for kids with scoliosis, all, all were most, mm -hmm. most supposed to have major back ops. And I mean, I can bore you all day. I've got a young boy with rare, rare form of dwarfism. He's never been out of pain. The hospitals couldn't get him out of pain. I've got him out of pain. I've got him running. I mean, it, the stories will go on and on and on. You can imagine the amount of people I've helped in the last sort of 10, 11, 12 years. So, and it, and, and I've been given a gift and, and I don't, none of my none of my uh my official work titles say any of this stuff because i i run a sports injury clinic i'm a sports injury specialist and i'm a, I'm a corrective conditioning coach i'm a strength and conditioning coach so but the, i've been given a gift i've been given a gift and it and it's you, people can poo poo it but my life has changed so dramatically since since that last near-death experience and that i don't know who he was or what he was but he was as real as you guys were you know yeah amazing yeah. everyone sort of <laughs> a lot of people, <laughs> if you can tell that story a lot oh. of people don't believe you you know they, they're like come on you know but that's what happened to me and that's my story and my life i mean i the abundance is like my kids never go about anything now i've got i've got i had a woman fly to me from argentina with scoliosis and spent eight months in essex for me to get her back right and send her home happy you know no pain no operations are people flying from all over the place and 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 i i at any one time i've got a dozen people on a waiting list waiting to see me and i yeah. I, I could work all day and every day and it's and it, and i used to get my self-esteem from sleeping with lots of women and people being terrified of me and now i get my self-esteem from this this is amazing you know this is i'm a different person and myself I, I i've changed so much i'm 
I'm like 60 next year and it's taken a long time, but I'm a different person. My kids can look up to me now. You know, it's, it's, it's a different world. It's a, it's a bit like Oliver Twist, you know, at the end of the movie, Oliver Twist, when he opens up the shutters and he's living in all these whitewashed streets and he's like, he's in paradise. That's where I live. How the hell do I end up living here? Just see, you, you know, uh, pause. I'm listening to you speak and I'm recalling the trailer, which, by the way, was great. And I'm amazed that they did such a great job finding an actor who looks like you. I mean, that's, you don't often find that. Yeah, Michael Socher, he's, he's a great British actor. He's been in Chernobyl. He's been in loads of things in the, in the UK. And he kind of played with me and I trained him in my gym. And I, I got him bigger because he had to play me when I was a doorman, when I was bigger. So uh -huh. uh, my wife was feeding him. And he's from Derby, right? So he's the Midlands. He ain't got a Cockney accent. So he, <laughs> he had to learn a Cockney accent. And he was like... And I used, to look after, I used to look after brothels. I used to look after ladies of the night and protect the brothels. You know, is that what you call them in the States, brothels? Yeah. Yeah, we so, do. Yeah, there's some other names I, too. But... A friend of mine tell me that. <laughs> so I, I just have some friends. He doesn't know personally. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and there was a scene in the brothel in the movie where he would ring me in the middle of the night and go, Paul, how would you say that? How would you say that? How's a cockney say that? And he was so, so good. And then Zoe Tapper plays, when I was, when I was running these security companies, I was dating a police inspector. Uh, and so she, Zoe plays the police inspector, so there's irony that the police were looking for me and she knew where I was. Right? So that's the love story in the movie. She was like, do I, get this guy, do I get this guy up or what? You know? <laughs> well, I, I wanted to ask you specifically, that in the trailer, there's this moment when Michael, playing you, uh, picks something up, throws it against the wall and just said, that's it. I'm not going to take it anymore. And that's a turning point, obviously. Yeah. representing a difference in your life from what you experienced as a child to what you were going to fight for in your yeah. life as an adult. And I'm, I'm wondering, you're sharing a little bit of that, but was there a specific turning point you remember that made the difference between then and now for you? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had a shoot. I don't know, I've got to lose a cockney because you won't understand me. I had, a, I had a gun in my mouth at one point. I was going to blow my own head off, right? So I went after the pedophiles because in my dormitory growing up, out of the eight boys, six of them committed suicide. And my best friend jumped in front of the train, the Elephant Castle. And the movie's dedicated to Liam. Hmm. So, sorry, every time. Um, <laughs> so uh, I went after him, and I obviously I didn't do him. Like, it was very close. I mean, it's in the movie, it's all in the movie. And this is the movies and the books are a, um, a positive revenge. Because I would have just ended up dead or in prison anyway if I'd have done them all. I got myself a brown in. I went after him. I stalked him for a few days. Because only one of them got a significant prison sentence. And they all walked away. Um, you know, I don't want to get involved in conspiracy theories, but a lot of vital evidence went missing, video evidence went missing. Mm. So only one of them got... My house father used to batter me every day, give me a good island every day. He got 14 years at the Bailey. And uh, he's dead now. And the woman that was looking after him, funny enough, has read all the books. She rang me from the care home and said, I'll get fired for this, but I just want you to tell you he died alone tonight. And she's uh, you know, I just wanted to let you know. So, you know, the best revenge is no revenge, but and live a good life. And, you know, it's easy to say, but not easy to do. I know. Well, well, you know, our hope is that there might be somebody out there watching or listening to you and, uh, who might be in the negative side of that story and could make a choice yeah. to, to, to change their lives. And I think yeah, you're a great I, example of that. I work with kids now in, who have been in my position. So, you know, I'm, I'm an advisor to Lord Mr. Well, who is child protection, who's a party chairman for hmm. child protection in the UK. I advise him. I've worked with gangs in London. I've worked with Boris quite a bit. Um, and I work and I've, I've raised a few hundred grand for kids' charities, literature charities, and giving speeches in the House of Lords. And you've got to do your bit, but you know, at the same time, I've got, I've got a couple of my own I've got to look after. So I can't be everywhere, you know. I've got a couple of my own boys. Hmm. Yeah. Paul, I have to say, I, I watched your trailer several times. I watched it with my family who's here. We were all just blown away. Cannot wait to see the film. And 
I really thought that was you. I, I, I had to take a double take. I was like, oh, it's not actually him. It's an actor. So well done on that. And congratulations on your books. Uh, this is the kind of story that gives other people hope, obviously. And this transformation that you have made is, I think, so unusual and has to be applauded because through no fault of your own, the way that, that you were brought up in the, the care facility to where you are today, and then not only working with people from a physical aspect, but from a spiritual, emotional, and, and bringing it all together to really look at the person as one. Mm. So thank you for, for all of that. Uh, and I'm wondering, you shared about your family, and uh, we know about uh, what you're, the work you're doing with other people. What would you say today are the most important aspects of your life? Well, I, I, I want to help more people than I do. I mean, I, I do 10 or 12 clients a day, which, and I'm exhausted. I've been a 12 hour day tomorrow. And it just exa it's physically exhausting, emotionally exhausting. But my results are phenomenal. And I get, and I, and it, and I get so, so much from that. I get so much personally from that. And I would just say, I just feel like once the movie comes out and the books are, are more are more out there, I, I'm going to be able to help a lot more people. I'm going to be able to reach a lot more people and connect to a lot more people. Because at the moment, you know, my kids say to me, oh, Dad, you're famous. People keep saying hi to you in the street and all that. You know, that's just, you know, I'm, I'm well known locally. But I would like to, to reach a lot more people. I've got a lot more to give. I've got, we all have. I've got a lot more to give. I know I, I'm scratching I'm scratching the surface of what I can achieve, you know, and what I can put in the people I can help. And and there's so many people in pain that don't need to be, not just physically, emotionally, spiritually. There's so many people in pain. And if they just connected and, and understood that the answers are within them and, and stop going externally, they just need, they just need to... To understand why they're in pain, understand themselves, and take a good look hard, hard look at themselves, and understand why they're in pain, and what you know, drugs and alcohol and denial and, and violence and all of those things. It's so easy to avoid. There's so easy. There's so many, you know, nature, spirituality, connecting with people, love, care. I mean, you, you, that is far more powerful. Far more powerful. When I help a kid who's going the wrong way, and and I get more out of that than the kid does. I'm just ecstatic, I'm ecstatic for minutes, you know. Mm. But the trouble is, you know, you can only reach so many people with, with a, you know. With, but I'm hoping as my profile rises, and this movie is now starting to win awards all over Europe. It's been bought by South America, Asia. It's been it's been bought all around the world, and it's you know it's it should be. I'm hoping it's in the London Film Festival this in autumn. We're just about to find that out. It's just it's just um, been chosen to go to the Italian Film Festival. So, and the movie I'm in the movie at the end with myself, and it sort of changes around. And the messages I don't want to spoil the movie because there's some right powerful messages in there which are going to help people just by watching the movie. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing all that. We do have some photographs, Paul. If you could just uh, share a little bit about what we're looking at. Sure. Well, that's just that's just me and my old my old, on my own gym doing some boxing training with my boys. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's my that's my lot. <laughs> the, dog, the dog's in there. I'm a dog. I love it. And we've got one more. Well, that's Liam. You're going to get me crying again. That's that's my boy who my my close friend who killed himself. The movie's dedicated to Liam. Wow. Liam is one of them very powerful boys and uh. And uh, he should still be here today, but unfortunately, he was abused from a very young age, and some abuse is very hard to come back from. Yeah, this your story is truly amazing, and we obviously don't have enough time to do it justice for for yeah. all that uh, that you've gone through and all the changes that you made, and all the people that you're helping. And I'd like to feature you in one of the chapters of my new book, Behind the Mask. So I'll reach out to you to see if you, I know how busy you are, but to see if you might have time for that. How can people get in touch with you? I have a website, which is uh, specialistconditioning.com. WW, I don't have loads. I've got, I've got a Twitter. I'm not great on, on the, as you can tell all the trouble I had getting on the internet. I'm not great on the internet, but uh, I've got uh, Paul Connolly at 11, is it? Or 11 at Paul Connolly's Twitter. 
I've got an Instagram account, which is the same, specialistconditioning.com, and obviously Facebook. And the, the book, Not Normal, has got its own page. There's quite a few, quite a few ways, really. Yeah. Well, it looks like if people want to find you, there's plenty of ways to do that. So, uh, so thank you again for being here, and and good luck with everything you're doing. As I mentioned, I'll reach out to you. Uh, any anything anybody wants to share before we wrap up? Oh, just thank you so much, Paul. You get me each time, and there is so much. Believe me, there is so much that hasn't been talked about. It's yeah. incredible. His whole story is incredible, and um, I look forward to hearing more, as I always do. Thank you so much. You are inspirational. It's nice to see Ian and Helena again, but obviously it's nice to meet you guys as well. Yeah, it's lovely. Nice, lovely to meet nice to meet you too. Keep your on doing what you're doing. doing. Thank you your, your, friend's life, your friend's life was too short. Your story gives it real meaning. Uh, you, you're to be congratulated on that. Thank you. Don't get me crying again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you again. Yeah. Bye, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank Take you. Care. Bye. Bye. Well, that was a terrific show. Great guests. Thank you so much. Uh, getting Pretty notified that the next show is starting. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, Ian and Helena, great job. I, I, I don't think that people realize how much work goes into getting three guests like we had today and preparing for the show. So, well done. Thank you. Uh, Thank just, you so much. Just very quickly, I, I think the, the catalyst for today was the three guests all overcame adversities. But even more, they all want to help people now. Mm -hmm. That's that the most amazing message. Great common thread. Yes, it is. Yep. Yes, it is. Thank you so much. We will talk to you again soon, Ian and Helena. Bye. 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 Oh, my goodness. Once again, they delivered with incredible guests. Well, Paul's story were. is like one I've never heard before, it, and um, it's amazing. And Elisa and Gemma, these are people that are helping the world, just like Paul is. So we're blessed to have them on our stage. Uh, absolutely. And it's a, uh, an honor for us to bring their stories out to everybody else. So, Yes, it you. is. Mr. Saini, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, best way to get me is al.cini at getbcat.com. Uh, send me an email. I have a toll-free number in the U.S., 855-999-BCAT. It's about helping you find the purpose of your company, of your, your team, the group that you manage. And uh, it's a uh, work we enjoy doing, and it's very much in line with the interviews we have on this program. So absolutely, meeting, that's what everybody's looking for in their lives. Well, thank you for being here. We want to thank our sponsors. We also want to thank Licorice Dragon Records for allowing us to play uh, ILO's music. And we want to thank Elisa, Paul, and Gemma, fantastic guests, and of course, our partners, Ian and Helena. We love you both, and we will see you again soon. Definitely. So for now, folks, uh, that's a wrap. We're coming back right after this with the Underdog Show, and then Mr. Cini and I will be back for the Business Talk Show. So that's you don't want to miss... Either of them, we've got great guests. We'll see you all later. Take care of yourselves. Bye.